Welcome to another episode of rawradianthealth.com and I'm Natasha St. Michael and thank you so much for joining me. So it's Monday, it's the beginning of the week and today I want to talk about the importance of getting good quality sleep. Over the weekend we were having this discussion on the juice fasting forum because right now I'm hosting a 10 day juice fast and a lot of the juice fasters were commenting about how ever since they started the fast that their sleep has been better than they've ever had it. And how a lot of them are like waking up and they're like super alert, they're not sleeping as much, but they feel more rested. And in general, most people are waking up feeling pretty happy and pretty like enthusiastic about getting up and getting on with the day. Whereas they've made, you know, noted that before, you know, they weren't morning people or, you know, it was really hard to like get out of bed. So. For a lot of them, this is the first time that they've ever experienced this. And it's a great thing when you, when you finally experience what it's really like to get good quality sleep and how it not only how it affects your morning, but how it actually affects the rest of your day. And it's not only on just feeling more alert and more balanced with your energy, but it also it affects, it affects everything. It affects your mood. A lot of times people that deal with a lot of depression, a lot of it is connected to the quality of their sleep. And it's one thing, like I, I noticed with myself, I, you know, I have a terrible history of really bad depression. And that was one thing I always noticed was that I really had to have good sleep. And if I didn't, it was like, you know, it would be terrible the next day, really, really terrible. And so sleep, it affects our mood, it affects our energy. But it also even affects our, horm our hormones, our cortisol levels, even our blood sugar. So a lot of people that don't sleep properly, a lot of times they also have weight issues. And it's like they feel like they can never get lose that extra bit of weight. And a lot of it could be corrected by just getting good quality sleep. Okay, Because one thing that you, you can notice is that if you're not sleeping well, and if you're not getting enough sleep, then you overcompensate during the day by eating more food because when we get tired we naturally just reach for food and so if you're tired from not getting enough sleep you're going to be reaching for food and more food than you need and that's why a lot of people gain weight if they're not sleeping properly okay and a lot of times too people mistaken that in the evening they need more food in order to fall asleep, okay, to get that kind of like that heavy, numb feeling so they can pass out. And the problem with that is that in, the food might make them heavy and numb and pass them out. But the, the problem with that is, is that then all the energy that your body would normally need to use to rejuvenate your cells and regenerate your tissues and, and concentrate on, on he, you know, healing you in the, in the evening, all the energy is going towards digestion. It's all just in the stomach of breaking out and down all that extra food that you ate in order to, to pass out. And you really needed that energy for sleeping and to regenerate your body. So that's a huge issue that I really want to stress the importance of getting good sleep. If there's one thing you can do, if you're not willing to change your diet to a healthier diet or you're not really into getting good exercise, then the one thing, if, if you really want to just take up your health a little bit to the next level and feel happier, feel more content with your life and feel more alert and energized, get on to having good quality sleep. And I'm going to give you a few tips, certain things that you can adjust in your daily life in order to get that good quality sleep. The number one thing would be to eliminate any kind of stimulants out of your diet. So that's the coffee, that's the caffeinated tea, even green tea, okay? Green tea has, has, has as much caffeine in it as coffee, okay? So you wanna get off that green tea or any herbal caffeinated tea. You can replace it with non-caffeinated tea, but just get the stimulants out. And that also includes like sodas have caffeine in it as well as even raw chocolate. It's got theobromine in it, which is a stimulant as well. And these things, they affect your sleep. 
They affect the quality of your sleep. They're, they're not allowing you to get into that deep REM sleep that you need, okay? So the first thing is get rid of the caffeine and all that. Second thing would be to eliminate drinking alcohol. Alcohol too, it has been, it's a known fact. There's been many studies on this that alcohol will not also keeps people at a very superficial sleep. They don't go into the deep REM sleep when they've had too much alcohol in their system, okay? And, and also too is that people tend to wake up throughout the evening or not be able to sleep as long when they've had a lot to drink, a lot of alcohol in their system. So that's another thing is really you'll notice the difference. Like a lot of people, it's funny, people use alcohol to, in order to sort of unwind and to pass out. But even though it might help someone fall asleep, they're not getting that deep sleep. Because when we go into sleep, we go into different levels, a uh, deeper and deeper sleep throughout the evening. And a lot of times people stay at like the the, the first level. They don't get to that deep point. And the deep point is what you want because that's when the body really starts to regenerate itself. Okay? And another thing too is is to use the end of the day and the evening to unwind. To you know our, our body is goes into has is affected by its environment. Okay? And so there's a reason why we have sunlight and, and we have the evening where there's no light. And a lot of times, what can really mess up someone's circadian rhythms and their sleeping is being stimulated by light, okay? By having too many lights on in their home, by staring into the computer screen or the television screen. That's just, it, it messes up your brain, that your brain is not producing certain hormones that allow you to go to sleep that if you're staring into bright lights your your brain kind of thinks it's still daylight so it's not able to start getting those neurotransmitters and and letting your body and your brain know that it's time to sort of shut down that it's just being stimulated that it's just constantly staying awake okay and that really it that's not not what you want so the main thing is in the evening is try not to be staring into bright lights and, and computer screen or television, but instead take like a hot bath, read, hang out with your kids, dim the lights, you know, really just slow things down. And then you'll notice that when you're ready to go to sleep, you just ease into it instead of like tossing and turning all night long and being like, when am I gonna fall asleep? Okay, because that's terrible. And so those are the main tips. And the main thing too is don't eat late at night. Okay, stop eating at least three hours before you go to sleep and really have a light dinner so that you're not using all the energy to digest food, that it, the food is already digested before you go to sleep, that when you go to sleep, it's beauty rest time, okay? It's time to regenerate and rejuvenate and get, you know, just let your body heal itself in the evening, okay? So that's my tip of the day with the sleeping and you know try these things out and see what happens because there's nothing like getting good night's sleep and waking up and feeling like you're on top of the world, okay? A huge, you know, your sleep makes or breaks your day. So have a fabulous, fabulous day everyone and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!